Some questions that come up all the time in statistics are, what are Z and T tests? What's the difference between the two? And then how do you know which one to use? Well, I'm here to break all of that down for you. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So for those of you totally unfamiliar with Z and T tests, let me give you the bare building blocks. When you have some phenomenon that follows a normal distribution and then you calculate a z-score, that is, the number of standard deviations that an observation is away from the mean, that z-score is actually a random variable in and of itself with two parameters. Specifically, this z-statistic is normally distributed with a mean equal to zero and a standard deviation equal to one. And in fact, that's used to build confidence intervals and hypothesis tests in a whole range of different scenarios. But then you've got what's called the t-distribution. So it looks a lot like the normal distribution, it has that same bell curve to it, except it does have wider tails. So let's say you calculate a t-statistic, we say that t-statistic follows a t-distribution, which has one parameter, and that's its degrees of freedom. So you say, okay, that's wonderful, but how exactly do you know which of these tests to use? I'm gonna talk about the scenarios in which you're going to use these things and then how exactly to use them. But before we get into all of this, please take one moment of your time to smash the like button to this video because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. And then lastly, I do have a link in the description of this video to my Patreon account and if you guys would be willing to support me over that way, that would be massively appreciated. So the most important thing to do before you start thinking anything about things like test statistics and distributions is to ask yourself what problem you're trying to solve. And many statistical problems are going to come down to either finding an interval estimate or testing a hypothesis about a population proportion, typically represented by the letter P, or a population mean, generally represented by the Greek letter mu. Obviously, there are extensions, like for when you have a difference in population proportions, P1 minus P2, or a difference in population means, Mu1 minus Mu2, but the same principle is going to hold. Now, let's start actually with the case of proportions, because these are actually a little bit more straightforward. And again, we want to estimate or conduct a test about a population proportion P. Well, in this scenario, we'll have conducted a sample of size n, and we're going to come up with some kind of estimate. That's our sample proportion, p hat. Now, I'm going to give you a possible real-world example. Let's suppose I was really interested in the true proportion of my subscriber base that's on the social media website Reddit. Now, suppose I did some representative, super scientific survey. The sample size that I got was n equals 100, and I came up with an estimate of p hat equals 0.6. That's, of course, the first step, but let's suppose I want a 99% confidence interval for that true proportion p. Well, for proportions, we use z statistics all around. So the formula for this confidence interval is going to be p hat plus or minus z star times the standard error of p hat, where the standard error of p hat equals the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat all over n. You can use a lookup table or you can use R or some statistical software to find Z star, but we do need to find Z star at the 99% confidence level. So I'm going to use this freely available table. It's gonna be linked to in the description, but when I look it up, I get Z star equals 2.33. Now we just plug numbers in and we get a 99% confidence interval of 0.486 to 0.714. Now that z star that I used there is an example of a z statistic, but now let's suppose I was conducting a hypothesis test instead, the same kind of thing is going to apply. Let's say I want to conduct a hypothesis test that a majority, that is p greater than 0.5, of my subscriber base use Reddit. And let's say I conducted the exact same sample here. So again, p hat equals 0.6, n equals 100. And we use a 5% significance level. 
So the test statistic here is z equals p hat minus p naught over the square root of p naught times one minus p naught all over n, where p naught is the null proportion, which is 0.5 here. Do the math here, and I get z equals 2.236. Like I said right at the beginning of this video, that z statistic is a normally distributed random variable with mean equal to zero and standard deviation equal to one. So I'm looking for here as my p-value, the probability that we observe in a standard normal distribution, a value of z equals 2.236 or greater. Again, use a table like this or use r, I get a p-value of 0.0127. And because this is less than our significance level that we set up at the beginning of 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis and we would conclude that, yes, a majority of my subscribers use Reddit. Now that we've looked at the case of population proportions, you may be asking, okay, what about population means? Well, before we get into any of that, it is super important to understand the concept of the central limit theorem. And I did a full tutorial on this, but here's the quick summary of it. Suppose we're taking a sample of size n from some distribution. n is of reasonable size, let's just say 25 or greater, and then even if that distribution we're sampling from isn't normal, x bar, that is the sample mean, will be approximately normally distributed with mean equal to the population mean mu and standard deviation equal to the population standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of n. Just as an example, let's suppose you knew that the distribution of IQs was skewed to the right with a mean equal to 110 and a standard deviation of 15. Now you go and you take a sample of size 100 and you want to know the probability that the mean of that sample is greater than or equal to 115. Well, we know the population mean and the population standard deviation here, so we can calculate the distribution of x bar. It's going to be approximately normally distributed with a mean equal to 110 and a standard deviation equal to 15 divided by the square root of 100, that is 1.5. This turns into a probability calculation with the normal distribution where you just calculate a z-score like you always do. Solve for z and you get z equals 3.333. Then you just do a standard probability calculation. You find the area to the right of z equals 3.333 is 0 0.0004. That's your answer. All this is, is just a probability calculation from the central limit theorem. The thing that you have to realize is, in the real world, when we wanna make some confidence interval or a hypothesis test about an unknown population mean, you can bet that we don't know the population standard deviation either. And it's precisely for this reason that for these types of calculations, we use what's called the t-distribution instead. And the t-distribution has wider tails than the standard normal does, because the fact that we don't know population standard deviation creates additional uncertainty. Hopefully that that makes sense now, we're going to go through the same types of examples of confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for population means. Coming back to our IQ example, scrap all the numbers that I gave you before, let's suppose we took a sample of size 50, we come up with a sample mean of 105 and a standard deviation of 14. Now we want to create a 95% confidence interval for the population mean IQ. The formula for that is x bar plus or minus t star times the standard error of x bar. Just like before, t star can be looked up using r or from using a table that's freely available on the web, and the standard error of x bar equals s divided by the square root of n, where s is the sample standard deviation. Do the math here, and we're gonna get almost exactly to a confidence interval of 101 to 109. Now let's use the exact same numbers in a hypothesis testing scenario. So again, sample size is 50, sample mean is 105, and sample standard deviation is 14. And we want to test at a 5% significance level if the population mean IQ is greater than or equal to 100. Our test statistic t is equal to x bar minus mu naught over the standard error of x bar, where again, standard error of x bar is s divided by the square root of n. Plug in and do the math, and we get t equals 2.525. 
use a table or use R, and we end up with a p-value of 0 0.0074. That is the area to the right of t equals 2.525. So we soundly reject the null hypothesis, and we conclude that yes, the population mean IQ is greater than 100. That about covers it. You've seen both confidence interval and hypothesis testing scenarios for z-tests and for t-tests, as well as an example from the central limit theorem. Now, I haven't shown you slightly more complex scenarios, like when you're dealing with differences in population proportions or differences in population means, but the exact same principles are going to apply. Hopefully now you understand which type of test to use and why. So thanks everybody for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, once again, smash the like button and then leave me a comment down below and let me know which one you tend to use more, the Z-test or the T-test. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.